Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Michelle Chang. I use she, her, and they, them pronouns. And I am the lead organizer um, of education at uh, the Coalition of Asian American Leaders. Um, so welcome again. Cal Fireside Chats are our fun and informal conversations with Cal staff and network leaders on issues and topics impacting our Asian Minnesotan community. Today's conversation is part of our month-long deep dives into Cal's policy priorities. Um, so make sure to check out our other fireside chats that are happening every Thursday this month um, in February, yes. And so um, I want us to get started so I can introduce our very special guest, Mo Gong. Uh, Mo Gong and I have known each other for a while now through community organizing and our work on ethnic studies. Uh, but I'm pretty sure our audience um, would love to hear more about you. So, Mokon, please tell us, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Uh, just checking. I think you could all hear me, right? Um, Michelle, just a thumbs up. Okay, cool. Uh, well, hey, everyone. I'm super excited to uh, join Cal and Michelle to be a, far, a part of this fire uh, side chat in regards to ethnic studies. Uh, and just quickly before I introduce myself, I just want to give a shout out to Julia and Ryan that's working behind the camera here and working through all of the logistics to make sure that we are looking warm and ready to go on a Thursday. So um, kudos and thank you. Thank you both. And so um, other than that, a little bit about myself. Oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start. Um, I guess I'll Try to try to make it brief, but I am um, a resident of St. Paul. Um, I've been in Minnesota for about 10 years. Uh, so I guess I could say I am a Minnesotan now. Um, and so I currently live on the east side of St. Paul. I've also lived in uh, various parts of St. Paul, um, from Como to the Dayton's Blood to the Summit of Grand area. Um, but other than that, I'm originally from the, the Pacific Northwest. Um, uh, uh, Pacific Northwest, mainly in Seattle and the Renton Kent area. Uh, and then I came out here to school about 10 years ago um, as a young individual trying to figure out my own identity uh, as a Hmong American and then um, found uh, at that time one of the two only Hmong studies program in the United States. And so uh, I attended Concordia University, St. Paul, and then got <clears throat> my teaching license in social studies, and then uh, also a minor in Hmong studies. And so um, 10 years later, uh, I guess I'm still here in Minnesota. So um, I guess that kind of like pivoted me to become a teacher in St. Paul. And so I've been uh, uh, in the classroom for about six years. Um, I'm currently not teaching anymore, but um, was a former social study teacher in St. Paul. Um, taught various, um, you know, area in regards to econ, geography, U.S. history, uh, and then was really um, fortunate to teach Asian American studies, and then also at a pilot in the Hmong American studies course through the social studies department. Um, and so those are some of the initiatives that I've been a part of. And then now my work um, involves ethnic studies programming and development at the district level. Um, and then we could share more and I'll talk more about kind of like, um, you know, how that's looking right now in St. Paul and the kind of direction that we're moving towards. Um, but other than that, uh, as Michelle had mentioned, we've also um, shared similar spaces, whether if it's in Cal um, or Street Stats and also the coalition. Um, and so I've been involved with a few, you know, um, different, different groups in, in different work in regards to education. But other than that, uh, I'm just really fortunate to kind of be in the position that I am now, kind of leading this work in St. Paul and then with everyone else. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll keep it like that for now. That's awesome that you were able to pilot um, like Hmong Studies program um, at, uh, what was the school you said? Yeah, so we piloted the Hmong Studies program over at Johnson High School. Uh, and then uh, Washington, Washington Tech, um, and then we also piloted at Harding High School. So, um, and I think the course is actually going to be um, running again this fall uh, with this upcoming school year. I know they do a rotation schedule with Asian American Studies and then Hmong, Hmong American Studies, and so I think this course is going to be up and running again. But yeah, no, that was super exciting. It was really just an initiative that, you know, um, a lot of Hmong educators were like, hey, 
Like we need this course for our Hmong students and, um, and we love Asian American studies. Um, but I think with our demographics specifically in St. Paul, we wanted to make sure that that was narrowed down specifically to meet their needs and their lived experiences. And so, um, so that was something that was really unique that came out of St. Paul and just happy to be wow. a part of it. Yeah, and that's why we need more Asian um, teachers because, you know, like they, they advocate for programs like this, programs that I wish I had when I was growing up. All for right. Sure, well, for sure. Yeah, well, let's talk a little bit about the Ethnic Studies Bill. Um, so just a quick overview. The bill, if passed, um, will make Ethnic Studies a requirement um, to graduate from high school. And it will require all schools to provide Ethnic Studies courses. Um, and also, um, one other point that the Ethnic Studies Bill has is that it will provide um, funding or a grant program that schools can apply for to help um, to help support um, them in their implementation of ethnic studies. Um, so that's the bill. And um, we're going, given your experiences as a teacher um, and now as someone who is pushing um, or advocating for ethnic studies um, at school um, or at the district level, um, what does ethnic studies mean to you? So I know we talk about ethnic studies a lot, but what does it actually mean uh, when we say ethnic studies? What will students be learning in courses and um, why is this important? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I think depending on various communities and who you talk to, um, I think each community will have kind of their variation and their definition of ethnic studies, but our shared understanding of ethnic studies um, just in a few words is really around self-love, um, empowering, uh, liberating, it's culturally relevant and responsive, um, it's community and action based. I mean, it's social justice, you know. Um, and so depending on who you ask, um, I think those are going to be some of the shared themes across ethnic studies. Um, but for St. Paul, um, what we've been doing with our course, um, it's actually titled Critical Ethnic Studies. Um, and it's really a interdisciplinary course that examines students' identity, their heritage, culture, and communities in relations to power structures and forms of oppression um, that have impacted their lives. Um, and so in this particular course, it is going to be a standalone course that students you know, will have to take. Um, I know other districts are um, have their own variation of like African-American studies or Black studies or Asian-American studies or Latinx studies. Um, and so those courses we do offer at various high schools in St. Paul, um, but for this particular course, it is going to be a standalone course that has shared themes across ethnic studies. Um, and I've shared just a few of those um, you know, themes and also kind of like words that summarizes the course, but really, you know, a major goal of this course is to really help students cultivate, um, you know, their knowledge of their self while appreciating the differences around them, uh, really building a sense of shared community within, um, uh, their own uh, communal communities, and they learn about the importance of advocacy um, for change and healing, and really to develop critical thinking skills to empower them to be agents, right, of change in their own community. So it's really, you know, uh, providing students, you know, tools um, to critically think about not only their own communities, but also the world, and then how do you find and act on change to really make our communities a better place. And so, um, so in a short kind of like summary, um, that's our shared understanding of ethnic studies. And then when we think about critical ethnic studies, that's what students are going to be, you know, getting when they enroll in this course uh, in St. Paul. So. That's awesome. And I just want to take a pause here too, just to say, um, while Cal is pushing the ethnic studies bill, uh, St. Paul Public Schools and Minneapolis Public Schools have already um, started implementing ethnic studies. Um, and have a policy to make ethnic studies a graduation requirement, uh, which is really exciting um, as um, they can be uh, role models for other school districts if um, the, the bill passes. For sure. Yes, thank you so much for sharing that, Mokong. Um, I do, I am curious, um, and you talked a little bit about it when you were introducing yourself, um, but what, what, what makes you like passionate about ethnic studies? Um, what led you to become an advocate for ethnic studies? Yeah, you know, um, I think I, I kind of share a little bit about just kind of my own journey and moving to Minnesota. 
Um, and so I think just like any kind of like young individual kind of like growing up, um, you know, as an Asian American and as a Hmong person, I was always kind of like trying to figure out my own identity. And, um, you know, back home, I didn't see myself reflected in the classroom, um, let alone in the curriculum and also uh, teachers who look like me. And so my journey of self-discovery has led me to Minnesota and then also opened up the world of ethnic studies. And so there's been a lot of relearning that I had to do uh, come into college. And so, um, you know, I, I just really see myself and a lot of the students that we work with today and also like the power of ethnic studies that students can see themselves in the curriculum and they can feel empowered right, um, to really create change, uh, not only for themselves, but also for their communities. Um, and so I think, you know, it is kind of like my professional field of work, but also very uh, personal in a lot of ways, just because, um, as I mentioned, this is also uh, my own journey. And so for, for someone who has, you know, gone to school and then also taught, um, you know, learn about Hmong American or has, um, has, has minor in Hmong, Hmong studies and also being able to, to teach Hmong American studies. I, I never really thought I would give the opportunity to actually do that. And so those are uh, things in terms of why I want such a huge advocate and continue to fight for ethnic studies. Um, and so, yeah. That's awesome. Um, so I am also curious, like how, like if the ethnic studies bill passes, um, how will it impact you um, as a community member, um, as an educator, um, I know that you, in the past, you've taught in classrooms, and so how do you see it impacting the work of educators? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, <clears throat> I think as of right now, um, you know, this bill is really important, and I think it's going to impact a lot of schools if it does get passed. And, you know, initially when I came on to take, you know, this work in St. Paul and to really develop, you know, the, the program and the framework, there really was no guidance to do this work at, at the state level or at the district level. Um, and so in terms of like a blueprint to, you know, institutionalize ethnic studies or develop an ethnic studies program in your district, like there was very minimal resources. Um, so when, when I talk about resources, I'm talking about um, program and structure, I'm talking about curriculum, you know, content. I'm also talking about, um, you know, professional development and training that teachers are getting. Uh, and then also licensure piece too, because I think when you're teaching, you know, um, you know, ethnic studies or ethnic studies related courses, you know, what's the criteria or what's the licensing process for teachers? So those are like all of the things that I think, um, you know, are, are not necessarily put in place yet in Minnesota. I know that California, and, you know, um, some districts out in the Bay Area are kind of leading that work, you know, as, you know, they pass you know, their ethnic studies uh, graduation requirements. Um, but for sure, um, since Minneapolis and St. Paul have passed their own graduation requirements, um, you know, I think if this bill does pass, I think a lot of the resources would definitely trickle down to help, um, you know, our own ethnic studies programming with resources and developments. Um, and, you know, I think, um, you know, just providing guidance from, from, from the state uh, to do this work um, is kind of the, the big key uh, issue right now. Um, and so, you know, as an educator, uh, I think that's really appreciative. And, you know, um, even as a community member, I think this work um, has to be done in community and, and not be done through isolation. Um, and so I think there's a big component of how do we make sure that we get um, not only student voices, but also community voices, parents, um, specifically folks who have been doing this work, uh, but maybe not necessarily calling it ethnic studies. Um, so make sure that those voices are at the table as well. Yes, I agree. That's really important. Um, and it takes um, a lot of funding. And so hopefully um, we can get that for schools as well. Um, so I wanted to bring it back to ethnic studies a little bit. Um, I'm wondering, you know, as you were growing up, um, we, well, I don't know if it was the same for you, but I didn't get to learn a lot about Asian American history in classes. Um, I remember in high school, I did a project on like the yellow power movement um, and was really excited to learn like a piece of history about Asian folks mobilizing um, because I never got to see that. Um, or it wasn't taught, but I had to like seek it out myself. Um, and I also didn't learn a lot about Hmong folks. I, I had to like 
go to China and Laos and like seek my own knowledge about Hmong uh, folks and like that sort of shaped like how I understood my identity and I wish I had that earlier because um, it really added to like my confidence and my understanding of myself. Um, but yeah, like what are some things that you're learning now that you wish you learned um, in school um, that are related to ethnic studies? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, you know, when I think about ethnic studies, I think it's always a, a journey, right? You're, you're constantly learning. Uh, I definitely don't consider my ex I don't I definitely don't consider my expert uh, myself as an expert in ethnic studies uh, or any particular field, uh, whether if it's Asian American studies or Hmong studies. Um, but no, for sure, kind of like you, I mean, I don't have a good recollection of just learning about, um, you know, even Asian uh, American history when, when I was growing up in school um, on, on the West Coast, even though the Pacific Northwest was a very heavily dominated, um, you know, uh, demographic of Asian Americans, but I don't remember that. Um, and oftentimes, um, you know, Southeast Asian narratives are also, are also absent from, from, from some of those uh, voices. And so uh, I, I didn't get a lot of that. And I think that kind of, that, that really led my journey to, um, to come to Minnesota as you know, I think St. Paul is kind of like, quote unquote, I think kind of the most capital of the world is what we call it. Um, and then everything kind of like trickled down from there um, and really wanted to, you know, share this knowledge with other folks who I think benefit from it, right? So it's something that I truly believe that, you know, students who identify positively with their own ethnic and racial identity have a better chance of academic success, right? And so, um, so that's not only my own kind of like moral compass and, and beliefs, but something that I truly believe in myself and have gone through this journey. Um, and, you know, I think it's a long time coming, um, particularly um, in, in Minnesota, um, that, that we need to have this. And uh, I guess I'm just grateful to be a part of this journey that uh, is continuing to lead this work with ethnic studies, um, not only in the district, but also um, with the coalition as well. Awesome, thank you for sharing that. Um, and yes, I feel like Minnesota is like is like a, a great community. There is a great community among folks here. Um, and you can't really find anywhere else in the US like this. So I feel blessed to be to be part of this community. Yeah, no, I remember one <clears throat> there was a, a professor that I had when I went to college, and I think she had mentioned something along the lines of you don't need to travel halfway across the world, right, to learn about communities, that those communities are actually in your backyard. And so I think for me, right, I had to travel halfway across the country to learn about myself, my own identity. But how do we make sure that that is accessible to students here right now, you know, instead of having them, you know, study abroad, not that that's not great, but I think it's just like, not everyone has those opportunities, right, to travel um, and, and to be in, in that position to be, you um, uh, to travel and to, and to be mobile to that capacity. And so those are things that I've constantly been thinking about in terms of my own journey as well. Absolutely, you know, and I don't know about you, but I'm still paying off my student loans <laughs> for traveling abroad. So yes, like we need to make it accessible and we, be, we need to bring it to the classrooms um, where they can just access that information um, growing up. Yeah, so, um, if anyone has questions in the audience, feel free to put it in the um, chat or in the comments um, and we can get your questions um, answered. Um, I do have one more question for you, Mokong, as those questions are coming in. Um, I want to know uh, your thoughts on how will ethnic studies courses include all students? I know we talked about um, our perspectives as um, Asian, Mo Americans, but how will it include all students? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, so as I mentioned, ethnic studies is really, um, you know, community and culturally responsive and really catering the needs to, you know, your students and your student population. And so, for example, uh, when we think about ethnic studies here in Minnesota, it may look very different from ethnic studies, say, like um, in the Bay Area or say, um, you know, out, out in Texas or Arizona. Um, and so, I mean, but, but 
uh, essentially, right, we think of ethnic studies as focusing really on um, historically marginalized communities, particularly communities um, of color, um, and really taught from an intersectional lens. Um, and so I think the intersectionality of um, not only ethnicity, but race, sexuality, gender, um, and, and so forth, right? Um, and so when we think about just how it's um, included, inclusive of all communities, right? Um, we, wanna, we really wanna make sure that students' lived experiences um, in their narratives show up uh, within this course. Um, but as I mentioned, again, really focusing on, you know, particularly communities, communities of color, um, and then also ensuring um, that, you know, all students deserve an accurate history um, in understanding of systems of power. Um, and not only just for students of color, but also for white students too, to be able to flourish in this world, uh, encounter, you know, institutionalized racism and oppression that exists today, because it's not something that just impact one particular um, group, um, you know, or race. And so it's really community driven, community oriented. Um, and so that's the approach that we are taking at St. Paul. Yeah, and I feel like that's that's like the general consensus around ethnic studies is like it, re it really is um, dependent on like the population of the school and who is taking that classes or the class. Awesome. Um, we do have a question from the audience. Are there any conversations about starting critical um, ethnic studies in elementary grades? Um, high school is great, but our younger students also benefit from ethnic studies. So Mokom, with just your experience at SPPS, is there, has there been any conversations about that? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, you know, long-term vision and goal, I think that is the plan, um, you know, but I think as a starting point, it is gonna be at the high school level, just as of now, um, but for sure we wanna see ethnic studies, um, you know, pedagogy and content across all content and all grade levels as well. And, and the younger we can get this in, um, you know, the better uh, to get students to feel comfortable talking about uh, race and identity uh, at a very young age. Um, so we could have deeper conversations, you know, as they progress into secondary or whatnot. And so those are, um, you know, conversations that we've had, but until, um, you know, we kind of get the ball rolling um, at the high school first, um, you know, I think we'll kind of make some slow progress. So for sure. Awesome. Um, and then could you, Moko, could you talk a little bit about um, the ethnic studies program at SPPS? When will it start? When can students start taking the courses? Yeah, so right now uh, we're piloting the course this year as an elective. And so we have three schools that participated um, in the pilot course. And so um, Como High School, Harding, and then Humble High School. Um, <clears throat> And then right now, um, I think we just have one school that's piloting it um, with this second semester. Um, but other than that, we did get the policy passed um, through the St. Paul board uh, last month. And so it is going to be a graduation requirement for all um, 10th graders starting with the class of 2025. So next year, sophomores or 10th graders will be required to take a one semester uh, course of critical ethnic studies to graduate. Um, from St. Paul Public Schools. And so, um, so that's kind of the timeline that we're working with right now. And students are currently in the process of, you know, course registration, um, you know, at their high schools. And so they're gonna be, um, you know, scheduling this course and building it into their schedule. Um, and then uh, all, you know, following grades or graduating class would also follow suit. And so, um, so Minneapolis and St. Paul, we're on kind of the same page of kind of like this is, the graduating class of 2025 that is going to uh, walk away with a critical ethics studies graduation requirement, which is which is historic. So, yeah, you SVPS and MPS are ahead of the game, um, and hopefully more districts can follow, um, and hopefully we pass this bill so that so that districts will follow. Yeah, so, I hope so. Yes. So we do have one more question from the audience. Um, how much is ethnic studies about learning about a student's own culture compared to students studying about other cultures um, that they are in community with? Yeah, for sure. Um, so definitely a big component of ethnic studies is really uh, around self-love, 
right? So understanding yourself, right? Understanding your own narrative, um, you know, your own journey of, of healing. Um, but then it's also about being in communities with each other, right? So when we think about not just, um, you know, collective, um, you know, uh, trauma or uh, collective um, struggle, but also collective resistance as well. So a lot of our stories and our experiences are intertwined. And in order to really create change for, you know, a better future, uh, we also need to understand that uh, a lot of the issues that we face as Asian Americans are not foreign, right? They're, they're really similar to other um, racial and ethnic groups as well. Um, and that's really what really drives this course is the shared understanding of community and really wanting to create change for a better future. So for sure. Wow, that was such a beautiful answer. That, that makes me think about how ethnic studies is just one part of making sure that our youth understand how, um, how powerful it is to be in a community and like how how much we um, can be dependent on each other. Yeah, and you know, I, I think I think once you have, and this is speaking from my own experience, but I think once you have a you know a better understanding of your own self, you start to have a better appreciation of other people and other cultures and communities, right? And that really comes from like self love. I mean, you can't love yourself as you can't love others. Um, and so it really stems from, you know, the idea of really nurturing your own growth, right? Being in communities with other folks too, so. Absolutely. Right. All right. Well, I think that's the perfect way to end this. Um, just remember, if you take anything from this, ethnic studies is about building community. Um, and I see there's other questions coming in. Um, we'll, I'll make sure that those questions are answered. Uh, via Facebook comments. Um, but to wrap it all up, if you are interested in advocating for ethnic studies, um, join us on March 7th for Cal's Day at the Capitol. And also don't forget to tune in to our next fireside chat on February 10th at 10 a.m. Um, and that one is going to be about our post-conviction relief bill, what it is, and why we support it. Thank you, everyone.